API strips allow you to test all kinds of things to identify your organism. So some of you will have to have a humidified chamber, and for those of you who do, you'll have to add some water. Move the water around so that uh, you don't have large puddles. Then open your package that has the strips. These strips are dry, and many of the tests are simply enzyme tests, and other of the tests are fermentation. That is, testing whether your organism grows on glucose or whatever. So look at the turbidity of the McFarland standard. This will give you an estimate as to how many cells you have. So you're going to add your cells to a dispersing medium. First you have to open up the capsule. And then you're going to add bacteria from your plates directly to that dispersing media. So take several colonies, add it to your dispersing media, and then check the density of the media and compare that density to your McFarland standard. These look pretty close. Bill did a pretty good job here. Then you're going to add this to the little test tubes, which are called capules or wells. And to get it in these wells, it can be kind of a challenge. You need to let it drip down the side and the inside of the capsule or capule. And make sure you avoid any bubbles. And notice that was bioesculin, galactosidase, and various other uh, enzyme tests. And uh, you go, you continue along the line until you reach ADH for this particular one. This is the strep test. ADH being alcohol dehydrogenase. So in addition to the enzyme tests, there are some growth tests as well. To, to look at fermentation, which is usually what we're talking about for this growth, you're going to want to take the remaining cells, the entire content, that's left in the vial that you had in dispersion medium and add it to the GP medium. Mix it around quite well so it's homogeneous and then you're going to add that to the remaining cupules. And determine whether you have fermentation. So notice that the dye is red. It's red uh, it's a red dye that will turn, change color with pH, so if you have fermentation, recall that you get a drop in pH, and that pH drop will be seen as a color change from red to orange to yellow. So there's ribose, arabinose, mannose, sucrose, and lactose. You need to be very careful to avoid air bubbles. You see how easy it is to get air bubbles in the cupule. So if we don't get that air bubble out, we may have too much oxygen to see good fermentation. There's trehalose, inulin, continuing on to the end, uh, raffinose, and the last. So then we want to get our mineral oil after this and cover it. The mineral oil actually prevents uh, the rapid exchange of oxygen with your median. So you begin with uh, the ADH. In this case, you, you do have that anaerobic as well. And then each of the sugars. And notice in this instance that uh, some of the bubbles in the lactose fermentation tube manage to work their way out. two left, and then you're going to want to cover it and then incubate it. 